born here in, uh, yeah, it's November something or other. I guess it's a Tuesday before Thanksgiving. So what is that, the 24th? Something like that anyways. So I got Timothy picking corn with the combine here. And I've just been running wagons and, uh, and trucks back and forth all day. But I just thought maybe you'd like to see the combine in action and see how fast he's actually going. Uh, this corn has been ravaged by deer and they piss me off every year and I still continue to grow corn because I love growing corn but I really do hate the deer. Um, but anyways, this field again was one of the fields that got wet roots and ended up uh, a replant on 99% of it uh, because the wet roots then transferred into dry roots and they don't go so well but I have been counting deer all day long well not all day long but out of here and if you can see on the other side of the fence row they just got they just started to run out of there there's loads and loads and loads of deer running across the field so anyway um, this is more than likely the last time I plant corn in this field until these deer get put under control uh, what I see now, if you can look down there, it's a little green. I know it's getting late, but the uh, we get this wonderful grass. It's called bluegrass, and it grows wild uh, in the spring. It'll get about, I don't know, it's about 28, 30 inches tall, and it produces a good ton and a half of material to the acre. So I've been harvesting that off of these fields and putting it, uh, taking it down to the mushroom barns. So, uh, with all the trash that's on the ground here from the corn, and there's even full panicum in here, what I think I'm going to do uh, is, well, there's one of two things. I may moldboard plow this yet this fall, work it up, put the, uh, you know, put the roller harrow to it, and actually plant Timothy and orchard grass in it this fall yet. Of course, we are pretty much the end of November, and I can probably get away with it okay. Or I'm going to let it go, let that bluegrass grow up through here, and then turn it, you know, make the hay out of it, and uh, sell it to Mushroom Barn, and then kill it like three times during the course of the summer, make it barren, and then come in with a disc, disc it all up, and uh, go ahead and plant my Timothy Orchard, and probably reed canary grass in here, because I'm not planting corn on this. I am sick and tired of feeding these miserable deer. So... Yeah, if anybody, uh, you know, thinks that deer can't put a farmer out of business, they're wrong. If you think you've got a deer problem, you've already got a deer problem, and you better start doing something about it now, because uh, if you let it go, or if you put your head in the sand and think that there's going to be some kind of a disease come in and cut the herd back, you're sorely mistaken, because that does not happen. Uh, so, yeah. Deer have put me out of the grain business. I am a now a mulch hay grower. Uh, horse people are stupid and they suck because they don't pay their bills, at least the hay bills, so I gave up on good hay uh, quite a while back. But I am more than likely going to be buying a big square baler, a small big square baler, either the uh, John Deere T100 or I'm going to go ahead and buy a Heston 3x3 for about, I don't know, you can pick them up for about $15,000 and I'm going to make good hay for the Amish dairymen out in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So anyhow, yeah, that is what's going on here. And you can see how the deer have just, there's no ears on there. They come along and they bite the silk off. And that is what deer damage looks like in the fall. In the summer it doesn't look so bad, but in the fall, the farther down I get, the worse it gets. And there's another field over there through that fence row. And that one there is just a complete disaster. There's nothing there. You get to the, well, there's, that, that's deer damage there. And I may just not pick that corn. I may just come in and mow it and bale it and sell it to Mushroom Barn because that's about all it's worth. So anyways, thanks for watching. And oh, there's, this is how brazen these motherfuckers, they don't care. They don't care that I'm here. And of course I didn't bring a gun along with me. And I really wish I did because I would have shot probably 10 of them by now. Um, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching.